Hello everybody and welcome to a community contest. This is the first contest I've run on this YouTube channel. If you missed the initial announcement video, well, this is the winner's poll. So the initial announcement was put out two weeks ago from the time of recording, and we announced that we were going to be doing a mayor's office design contest. This would be judged on visuals, practicality, design complexity, lore, and it has to fit within some grid restrictions and the mayor has to be satisfied. I was able to get eight submissions on my Discord server in the contest's room, and we will be hosting more contests in the future. The top two will win some merchandise from my merch store, and also some community bragging rights. After this video is over, there will be a poll that goes live with, uh, with links to community polls, uh, where you can vote on your favorites. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do all eight of them in a single poll, so if that's not the case, then I will be spacing it out over two polls, but we'll be doing a community vote as well. But all that being said, let's dive into the standings. So first off, we have two disqualifications, although I will show their forts regardless. The first one being Stone aka Seashore's Wall. Stone is a good friend of the channel and uh, one of my Twitch moderators. Unfortunately, however, their submission has to be disqualified due to it not fitting within the 15 by 15 grid limit. So this is per Z level and the entire construction has to fit within the 15 by 15. While the individual rooms do fit, and if it was vertical, it would have been fine. Unfortunately, I have to disqualify this one on principle. Apologies, Stone. The second one also unfortunately did not fit within the grid limit, and the mayor wasn't satisfied with their bedroom. So I also had to disqualify this one as well by Bon Bonjic. However, I would like to shout out something. This one had a perfect 10 in the lore score. If you would like to see all the scoring that I did for these, there's a link to that down in the description of this video. But it got a perfect 10 on lore score because they wrote a f like three and a half page document about this fortress. I will of course link to that in the description of this as well. It's a wonderful little read and I recommend that you check it out. Awesome submission regardless. It's just unfortunate that the mayor wasn't totally satisfied and the location didn't totally fit. In sixth place, we have Telen Artho. Telen Artho built a rather simple but effective mayor's office, the mayor being totally satisfied, including enough beds for all of the mayor's children, which is a detail I really like. Overall, I scored this one a 4 on visuals, a 8 on practicality due to the simple materials used, designing complexity due to it only using a single Z level and being rather simplistic in its shape, uh, I'm giving it a 4, and for its lore, due to the nice little write-up on the Discord, it's going to get a 6. It does fit within the grid needs and everybody's satisfied, scoring a total of 21 points to land and this fortress in sixth. Next up is Wholesome Shadows uh, submission, and this one uh, kind of perplexed me a little bit, as there is a un incomplete wall construction uh, in the bottom left. However, I do really like the design of this one. The minecarts are a nice addition, and the area for the mayor is quite compact and fits in quite well, and the design is rather unique. So for this one, I gave uh, Wholesome Shadow a 6 on visuals, an 8 on practicality due, due to the easy access of the materials required for the build, a 6 on design complexity, and a 3 on lore due to the fact that they didn't write too much about this location. And it does fit within the grids and everybody is satisfied, so we're all good there. This fortress and submission scored a total of 23 points, landing it in 5th. Next up is one that I think is kind of interesting, but also just barely squeaked by for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I would just like to shout out Rock Jitsu's impeccable design, uh, scoring a 9 on visuals. Due to the very expensive materials used and wide variety of metals, I've put the practicality at 5, as it's not a super practical thing to recreate. The design complexity got an 8. But unfortunately, the thing that really pushed this one out of the top three is there was almost no information written about it. So I'm giving it a two on lore, which is landing it in fourth with 24 points, just one point ahead of Wholesome Shadow in fifth. I do really like this build. I think it's really nice looking. The mayor's completely satisfied. It fits within the limits and everything ma matches what it would need. It just needed a few lines of text written about this mayor. Tell me a little bit about them. Who are they? And why do they live in such a wonderfully well-appointed room? That was really the thing that broke it here. This one could have placed first, had there been some more writing about it. Since we're about to hit the top three, I reached out to a friend of mine who's been working on a tool for Dwarf Fortress called Vox Uristi. Vox Uristi uh, allows you to export fortresses and scenes from Dwarf Fortress as a 
Vox file, which is compatible with Magic of Voxel, allowing you to do high quality 3D renders of your fortress. So I've asked them to render a cup, the top three for us. So alongside of the actual footage of the forts, you're also going to see some pretty renders courtesy of Vox Uristi. If you want to know more about Vox Uristi, there's a link to the video I did on it in the description, as well as to the software itself, if you would like to take part and mess around with it. So number seven is from Defilium. And they have submitted a number of things to the various fortress videos I've done in the past. And this particular fortress, I'm, or this particular build rather, I'm a little bit torn on. While I really like the design and it does fit, uh, for some reason these windows do not show up and I'm assuming that it's to do with some sort of mod that is being used. I did request as part of the build that everything be of being vanilla content and these gems kind of sitting around the edge while they are gem windows aren't showing up, which is concerning to me. So that's kind of one of the main things for me that pushed this one out of the top two. But actual design itself wise, one floor up, there is actually a single tile missing above one of the windows, which is the other thing that kind of pushed me out on the visuals front. Uh, had those windows looked proper and there not been a hole in the ceiling, I, this probably would have gotten an eight or a nine on visuals for me. But instead I've landed it on seven. For practicality, it's got a 5, as it's not super practical to rebuild this thing, as it's entirely constructed out of nickel silver, which is not the most common material, and would be quite hard to replicate. However, because it is super high up and in a really nice location, uh, it does get a 5 in design complexity. The only reason I didn't score it higher is because it didn't utilize multiple Z-levels. It's just a single Z-level and there's a hole in the ceiling. The write-up about the fortress itself was quite nice, and so I'm giving it a 6 for lore. And it does fortunately fit within the grid, and the mayor is satisfied, uh, meaning it is not disqualified. Scoring a total of 26 points to land this fortress in number 3. Next up is ZN Jacobs. Now this is one that caught my eye right when it got uploaded, as it's properly utilizing multiple Z levels, similar to the way Rock Jitsu did in their fortress. However, this one's using much more practical materials. It's using wood and easily accessible things like quartzite. Looking around at the actual setup itself, the bedroom is nicely separated from the dining room and the office, and it also moves up onto a second layer where we have a loft setup show, uh, showing off the main entrance as well as the side entrance for the upper floor. I really like this design and I think that the layout is quite charming looking and it's something that really kept me looking back at this one. I've given it a seven for visuals, a score of eight for practicality due to the ease of access of the materials used. The design complexity gets a seven, scoring it just above some of the previous entrance and the lore I'm giving it a 5 due to the little write-up attached alongside of it. It does fit within all of the uh, spacing requirements, just barely, but it does. And that lands it with 27 points in second place. So you'll be receiving a DM from me uh, via Discord, Zen and Jacobs, and uh, I will be reaching out to you to confirm what mug you would like from the merch store as prizes. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Who got first? Well, it's a surface construction by Geotrack. Visuals, I've given it an 8. Practicality, I've given it a 10. And design complexity, I've given it an 8. And lore, I've given it a 6. And it does, of course, fit within the required spacing, scoring a total of 32. The practicality score is so high because all of the materials are extremely readily available and av available on almost any map. The visuals rank is because it's an above ground construction with multiple Z level usage. Design complexity is so high because again, it is above ground and also utilizes the multiple Z levels. The only thing that could have pushed it higher is if the corners were curved off or if there was a central pillar. The corner, however, is curved off down in the bottom and I really like the combination of wood and stone used for the main floor. And I also really like the ground patterns. It tied, in fact, with Rock Jitsu's multiple level fort 
However, because it also has quite the write-up uh, contain, uh, contained on Discord, it also gets a six in lore, which pushes it past everything else, scoring that total of 32. Now, I really like this build. I think that it's kind of the peak of what I was looking for for this contest, and I really like the, the addition of using wood as well as stone, practical materials, and nice layouts throughout. The upper level where the mayor sleeps is a very nice layout, uh, complete with patterns on the ground to make things look nice. There's even some jewelry that the mayor likes, including uh, one of their favorite pairs of gloves that they're clearly gonna put back on when they wake up in the morning, right? And definitely not just leave on the floor, right? Right? So GeoTrack, keep an eye on your DMs. Uh, I will be reaching out to you tonight after I post this video uh, to get you your prizes. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking part in this competition. I just want to say that this competition wouldn't be possible and I wouldn't be able to afford to purchase merch from my own store for people if it wasn't for my patrons. So thank you very much to all the patrons that are currently shown on screen. If you would like to see more contests like this in the future, leave a suggestion down in, down beneath this video in the comments section of what kind of design contests you would like to see for Dwarf Fortress. After now that this, vi now that this video is out, I can uh, go back to working on Community Fort's videos as per normal. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.